Adobe have just updated Adobe Camera Raw to version 16.3 and Lightroom as well, which adds generative fill backed by Firefly into the what's now the remove section, which used to be the healing section of Adobe Camera Raw. And you think to yourself, wow, this is amazing. We have generative fill at the raw level to remove distractions. This has got to be too good to be true. This is a, an ISO 2000 image, which means it's going to be relatively noisy. I'm shooting with a Sony A1, so it's not that bad. But at the altar here of this church that I photographed in Arkansas, I want to get rid of the piano here because it doesn't create balance with the rest of the image. So I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to go ahead and remove this uh, piano. Now I did this in Photoshop uh, in, in a tutorial very recently using the remove tool and I was incredibly impressed with how Photoshop handled that. So let's actually compare how this new generative fill stacks up versus something like the remove tool in Photoshop. So I'm going to go over here. You're going to see now that this is a, a little bit different of an icon. It's the remove uh, now, not the healing section now. Now this tool is relatively easy to use. It's very similar to using generative fill inside of Photoshop or even the remove tool inside of Photoshop. What you're going to see here is use a generative AI in order to uh, repair something or uh, use object aware. If you were to change over to something like heal, like you're used to, or even the clone stamp tool, like you're used to, uh, you will not see the generative information there. So we're going to go ahead and use this. Uh, we're going to put generative AI on uh, object aware. When you click that, as you drag around an object, it will do its best to try and find that object versus the other things in the image. But what I want you to notice here very specifically before we even begin is the noise pattern. There is noise in this image because again, it's an ISO 2000 image. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn object aware off and I'm going to go ahead and just paint over this piano here. And again, it's all about just creating balance here in the image. You know, if I was actually there and I, and I work there and I had the ability to just say, you know what, for this photograph, I'm going to remove the piano. I would have just pushed it into a corner or something like that to create that balance, but I don't work there. And, uh, you know, I don't think anybody would like me doing that. So I'm just going to go ahead and move it in Photoshop. I'm going to speed this up here. Okay, so now we're all painted in. All I have to do is press apply. If I want to, at this point, I can go ahead and say subtract. If I oversprayed in certain areas where I didn't necessarily want an overspray, I could use the subtract tool to come in here and really make this a really fine tuned selection. If I'd like, we'll go ahead and press apply. It's going to take a couple seconds for this to go through, uh, but we'll see if generative AI does a pretty decent job here. And then we'll compare it and stack it up inside of Photoshop with the remove tool, because I'm actually very impressed with the remove tool, more impressed with the remove tool than I am with any generative uh, things that happen inside of Photoshop at this time. And I'll explain exactly why. I do think that this technology is phenomenal. Don't get me wrong but there are problems with it. And the main primary problem I see with this is specifically if you're someone like me who really truly wants to make every aspect of their image look unified, Genevieve is just not going to do it. Okay, so it's done. We've got this uh, complete. What we can do now, before you don't want to paint anywhere else because if you want to see different variations, you have to do that now. So we're going to go ahead and move this over to get different variations. Okay. So, um, looking at it here, it looks like it's still got a little rid of a little bit of my post here, but as I go through these variations, I want you to notice something. Okay. I want you to look at the noise pattern that is happening here in this one. We actually have a really good noise pattern that's happening with this generative fill, but it's not the same as the noise pattern that's happening here. So what that means is that as you reduce noise or as you sharpen, this is going to get noise reduced and sharpened differently than this area is. We can really clearly see that in version number three, where there really is no noise pattern in any of the place where I drew this. Now, what's going to happen is as you process this image, if someone's looking close enough, they're going to be able to determine that this doesn't match this that this area right here is smoother than this area over here. If you're working on really small sections, nobody would be the wiser. But if you're working on big areas like this one, people are going to be able to tell that generative fill was used. Now, at this point, generative fill inside of Adobe Camera Raw does not have the ability to uh, refine it as it does in the Photoshop beta. So I can't refine this and make it any better than it already is. When I press the refine button here, the only refining that I have is refining the selection that I made, not refining the detail and the noise pattern that comes through here. 
So what I'm going to do here, let's just say this is the one that I'm going to go with. I'm going to go ahead and press open. So this opens up inside of Photoshop. So I can show you the difference between this and the remove tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press V and move this right on top of this image. And then I can close this out so we can do our comparison. This is ACR Gen Fill. Okay. And then I'm going to turn this off. And what I'm going to do with this on the, on the remove tool version is I'm just going to move down here. I'm going to get the remove tool inside of Photoshop and I'm going to go ahead and paint this in very similarly how I did in Adobe Camera Raw. That's a very weird word to say. Similarly, <laughs> if you say it like 16 times fast, you're going to say it really funny. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint this around. It's like, what do you talk about when I'm sitting here, you know, moving my mouse around? Like, do I just have the awkward silence that you hear in some tutorials or do I keep talking? I don't know. Like sometimes that's when silly stuff comes out. Okay. So I've got that painted in. I'm just going to go ahead and press enter and see what the remove tool does. And it does it fast. Okay. So now here's the difference between remove tool and the gen fill. What I've found with the remove tool is that it tries its best to maintain the same noise pattern here. And if we look closely, it does have a noise pattern that resembles the noise that's happening over here. It is a little jargled. It is a little textured, almost fabricated looking, but does it look better than this one? I would say yes. I would say as far as the blending is concerned, this remove tool is going to blend in a lot better than anything with generative fill. And that goes for what happens in Photoshop and also what happens in Adobe Camera Raw. At this point, I am not installing the Photoshop beta into my system to use the refine that's going to happen with the generative fill inside of Photoshop because I don't really support uh, downloading beta tools when they are not ready for prime time. And speaking of not ready for prime time, as much as I love the ability and the possibility of having generative fill inside of Adobe Camera Raw to make uh, distraction removal so much easier, if you've got a high ISO image, this is not going to cut it. I would say that your ISO is going to have to be at about 100 for this to even uh, be remotely close to matching the same or similar noise pattern to what's happening in the image. And even in that case, there might be a slight differentiation between what you use generative fill for and the actual noise pattern that you see in your image. For me right now, this generative fill is just too clean. And unless the entire image is clean, it's just not going to look right and, you know, maybe I am being a little harsh because if we zoom out here, we can barely tell. But if it's a larger area or if it's an area where maybe you're going to print this very large, if you're going to print this, you know, four feet by uh, eight feet and put it onto a wall, that spot is going to stick out like a sore thumb. If you're going to print it 13 by 19 inches, maybe not so much. But these are things that you need to keep in consideration when you're working in your workflow. I know I'm being hard on this gen fill stuff. But you have to be when you want to push innovation. And I really appreciate the fact that Adobe is pushing innovation with their generative fill with Firefly. I think it's incredible. I just think that maybe, maybe they could work a little bit more on how generative fill reads the image so they can possibly match the same or similar noise patterns more predictably than it already does. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I do sincerely appreciate this. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple so that you can use them in your workflow today just like these new tools that are coming in hot from Adobe.